What made him this way? What is the attraction? What keeps us fascinated? This is the story of Chris Chan. Captain's Log, star date February 8, 2009. Christian uploaded a video announcing his new website domain. The uh, Sonichu site is back up. It's at uh, sonichuandrosechu.com. That's what it is now. Uh, yeah, I've been under distress lately. Uh, the recent one where uh, y'all may have watched the videos, the uh, last two videos before this one. Hmm. Yeah, forced into doing that. I won't be repeating that again, and hopefully not. Uh, hopefully I won't be repeating that. Use that take. Anyway, also, uh, if you're on the after pains from that, I find out that, uh, there's been some brush fire or wildfire, that sort of stuff. Fire. Going on in the southern Australia area. Where my sweetheart... Sarah, Cassandra McKenzie, Panda Halo. <clears throat> she was uh, in that. She was in that neck of the woods, and I haven't heard from her in like uh, over two weeks. And the fire's been going on for like uh, past during the past few weeks. So I pray that she's still alive. I hope she didn't die in the fire. Sarah, if you if you are hearing this message, please. Let me know that you're safe. And also, let me know. Can I still expect you over at my house? Or are you going to go to Clyde? Please let me know. Because I miss you. I still care deeply about you, Sarah. Sarah Hart. Two days later, he posted a video in which he attempted to showcase that the promise he made to Clyde Cash about cleaning up his room had been fulfilled. For example, there's uh, more walking space. Look right here, there's definitely space between that and the bed. And you look over here. More walking space to the door. And I got that tub off the uh, top of my couch so I don't fall down and hit anyone. I had to leave the stuff, other stuff up there. But at least I didn't have to compromise much. But also, uh, after talking about that, and like, no, 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 Clyde knows that I've kept my promise. Ich bin schwer, Julie. Ich bin schwer. Chris was under the misapprehension that the phrase meant I love you in Mulvanian, when in fact, anyway, it was the German equivalent for I am gay. I have received in the mail today a letter from Nintendo of America in response to the piece I sent in the snail mail. It comes from Mike Chandler over there. No relation, at least as far as I know. It has proven my, my family and my congregations as well as my own theories. I shall read it to you from beginning to end. Mr. Shigeru Miyamoto did not have a meeting scheduled with you, nor has he, has he been corresponding with you. Mr. Miyamoto speaks and writes only very limited English, and our game development teams do not accept unsolicited game suggestions or ideas. Although Mr. Miyamoto makes occasional business trips to the U.S., he spends the majority of his time in Japan at Nintendo's headquarters. So, I was never in correspondence with Mr. Miyamoto or Reggie Phil Imes at all. They were imposters. I thought as much. So, there it, there it was. Black and white. From Nintendo of America. He later joined a mumble chat and recapped the latest developments concerning Nintendo. Well, anyway, so anyway it's, an, it's an official letter from Nintendo of America. Because uh, the envelope 
it was as a, as a, just like the previous envelopes I got from Nintendo of America, as well as the uh, letterhead on the letter. Yeah, it's easy to forge. It was tight, oh. and, and it has a signature on there. Just because it's typed and it has a signature doesn't mean it's real. In fact, wouldn't typing it make it even more yeah. easy to forge since it's not handwriting? Later on, one of Chris's cats, Lucy, arrives. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Lucy. My cat, cat. Excuse me, excuse me. Oh, can I talk to the kitty? Hi, Lucy. There you go. Two days later, convinced by Julie, Christian created a new section on his SonicChewAndRoastChew.com website called Sonichu and Roastchew's Love Shack, which consisted of sexual imagery concerning his Sonichu characters. It was originally designed to be protected by an age restriction. Most of the drawings were simply pages from the Sonichu comics, but as time went on, he updated the section regularly with new renderings. On February 13th, audio of a sex chat on Skype between Chris and Julie emerged. During the 20 minute long virtual intercourse, Julie's voice cannot be heard, but it can be determined that they are role-playing, with Julie possibly as a cat and Chris as Sonichu. Sounds of Chris masturbating can be heard throughout. I sent a few short static shocks up your, up your pussy. Not enough to hurt you too bad, but make you feel good. You're gonna get my milk, kitty cat. After Christian's climax, he is heard drinking a carbonated drink and consequently belches. Excuse me. Might say I'm burping because uh, I quite enjoyed you and your juices. On the same day, Christian took part in another mumble chat, during which he reveals the idea Julie had for a video. It's basically a video of me standing up to Clyde and showing him how strong I am, doing a few kicks for the camera. Yeah, you should throw some punches, show him what you're made of. You know? I, I pretty much already proved my strength when I ripped that dildo in half. Chris tells a fan that the original she came for quick pick was torn up into small squares and placed into an envelope. Why, why did you do that shit? Like, and, and well, I understand like Rose and you, but like, you know, why something that's from real life? It's not necessarily from real life. It depends on your interpretation. I mean, it, it's hardly, I mean, most women have long brown hair, and the eyes are censored, so. Most women? <laughs> yeah, but I remember that one video you were saying is Megan. Because in the end, it broke up my friendship with Megan. On Valentine's Day, 2009, Chris and Julie had another sex chat together much in the same vein as the one a day prior. Okay, I'm looking at pussy while you're sitting on my face. Trolls were made aware of the cybersex session taking place, and some decided to make use of that knowledge. While Christian was masturbating, four calls were made to the family phone by trolls attempting to convince Bob to walk in on his son. The first three callers were dismissed by Bob, telling them that Chris was sleeping. The fourth caller exclaimed that Chris had posted a video on YouTube saying that he was going to kill himself. Understandably concerned, Bob went to check on him. Christian, what are you doing? Nothing. I'm getting all these crazy damn calls. What are you doing? Nothing. Well, give me that crap. Now, what's going on? Dad, will you get out of here? No, I will not. People tell me that you're about to kill yourself on YouTube. What? What is your trouble? I'm not going to kill myself. Get away from that TV. Fine. Get away from the internet. I'm cutting it down right now. No! Dad, no! Yes. No! Don't do it, Dad. I'm going to shut this thing right down. No. Yes. No. Go wake your mother up. Don't bother me. You tell them what's going on. This thing is going to go down. No! Yes. No. After they were disconnected, Christian called Julie again, telling her what happened. Hello, Julie. Yeah, you know, listen, you'll have to talk to me. I'm calling you for my PSP. It does not accept type feedback. I told my mother about you. Yeah. Uh, she says she'll believe it when she sees you in person. What am I going to do now? Mm, well, pretty much my uh, erection has uh, been unmoved. And I'm not feeling in the mood for it right now, but, you know, hey, from the bright side, we still had our Thunder Valentine's Day date. In my, in my big planet. Two days later, Christian found out that his aunt Karina was in a very ill state, and it was very likely that she would pass away soon. Later on, 
Chris and Julie chatted on the PlayStation Network, where they discussed his aunt's condition. My mom was to go visit Aunt Korea this weekend, but she did not invite me along because I need to stay home, help uh, so be here for my father in case something happens to him. And I got to take care of the cats. Yeah. She also addresses his job prospects, with Chris claiming that he was looking for paid volunteer work and Julie questioning his use of the word volunteer. The next day, Chris and Julie had another PSN chat, covering many of the same topics. Uh, so, hey, Mom, be sure there isn't a way to go see our friend tonight so I give her the last hug. She won't even know you're there. She's your lover. Yeah, well, at least I was able to give her, give her my last I love you when I called her the other day. That's right. So that's all fine. Yeah. All right, Mom, I'll talk to you later. Did you get that, Julie? Yeah, could you ask your mother if I talk to her? <laughs> you spell summon Snorlax. Hmm. Listen, I'm talking to Tim and Julie on the PSN network. She wants to say what they allow to you. I'm not able to talk to the uh, Does she emotional? I am not able to talk to anybody right now. Will you leave the room? Uh -huh. Thank you. I'll see you later. Someone failed. Thank you, Warren. Julie encourages him to make a video with one of his inflatable sex dolls. What about that blow up doll? Do you have like two of these? Oh, the uh, blow up doll. Yeah, I did have two, one for backup, but uh, like a few weeks ago, when I was uh, doing a thing with it, it got an internal injury and uh, it deflated. Aw. Uh, wait, how did it get punctured though? Was it punctured with your. You know, too much uh, pressure, too much uh, humping force, you might say. Oh, if you're willing to call it that. Or, like, you know, possibly some weight. But, you know, I had a good run. Chris, you know what you should do? You should try and make that video, you know, of you doing your thing with the doll for me. All right, I'll make that video for you tonight. Later that day, Christian took part in a group chat on Mumble. I can't wait to sort of Christmas channel. It's bad. Yeah, you know, take a deep breath and accept it, because it's real. A little while later, he talks about how he recycles his semen. I have this friend, I think he might be gay, um... Oh. I think he's a masturbating, he drinks his own semen, is that gay? Uh, no. I don't think so, I don't think so because, uh, I've done that, I, it's called recycling it. Why? Wait, then answer. Basically recycling, so it's like, uh, he doesn't necessarily have to lose it. I mean, because, you know, you think of it as a waste. If you, if you bang it out, and then you, uh, and then you put, I mean, it's like you flush it down the commode or leave it in the uh, condom and put it in the garbage can. So I think it's burned as good by stomach acid. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, still, still, it's fuel for the new sperm cells. Plus, also, I've learned on the internet that there's vitamins in the, in the sperm cells as well. But so it's like uh, basically you're helping yourself when you do that. Although first, although person, I'm kind of kind of sick of uh, on my own. But so lately, I've just been disposing of them. I mean, it's, uh, it just depends on, on your own individual taste. Uh, Chris discusses the prospects of a threesome. My name's Emily. Oh, hi, Emily. I don't understand why you're still saying that. Honestly, tell me about it. Chris, oh. I am in love with uh, Julie right there, who just uh, spoke just now. Oh, she she sounds like she's really pretty. Maybe we can have three <laughs> Oh, wow. Chris also tells Julie that he would be willing to participate in a threesome with another man. The other members of the chat responded by accusing him of wanting to engage in homosexual activity, but he defended himself by stating that it isn't gay, as long as their testicles do not come in contact with each other. All right, I guess I would accept a threesome with you wanna, well, you hear that, Emily? Uh, after Julia and I done a few times, we can invite you. That'd be really cool. I mean, we can go shopping at a sex store beforehand. Um, yes. Um, it's me. It's certainly, um... Hi, Sarah. I, I thought you were going to be a little intrigued of a person. Oh. I thought it was going to be special. It can't be special, Sarah. It can't okay. be. Okay. I'm really upset right now. I feel like you don't care about me. Sarah, I do care about you. I'm sorry I upset you. Thank you, Chris. Emily asks a question about genital piercings, referring to penises by the euphemism ducks. Would you ever get your duck pierced if your sweetheart thought it would be really hot and would improve your sex life? Oh, no, I would never have. I no. feel like it, it can 
Chris about his penis. Christian and Sarah May get into a heated argument because Julie had second thoughts about her involvement in a possible threesome scenario. I swear, I will not uh, have sex with Sarah May. It's not fair, Chris. It's not fair. Why would you do this to me? I didn't know back then. I'm sorry. I feel so broken right now. Julie and Chris agree that adultery is frowned upon in the Bible. Well, I'm Jewish. Is, is that okay? Oh, you're Jewish? I did, yeah. not know, I did not know that. But, yes, that's okay, Julie. I was really afraid that you would get really upset with me. No, it's okay. I'm not upset with you, Julie. And I accept the fact that you are Jewish. Uh, and also, uh, I may offer an input. Uh, did not, if I heard correctly, uh, people who are Jewish were not supposed to have sex outside their religion? Yes, yeah, some people believe that, but not all of them. Do you believe in it? Yeah, I, I think as long as the people love each other, then it's okay. Both and Julie, you are right. Chris calls Sarah May by the wrong name four times in a row. That was me, not Julie. I, Why are you calling me Julie, Chris? I, know, I said yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I, you, are you pretending so, no, that no, I'm Julie? No, no, Sarah. No, I'm not Why pretending. Why would you do that to me? I'm sorry, it was an accident. How could you make it a stupid accident like that, Chris? I'm not perfect. We're not perfect. We're all human. But we have rights to make mistakes. I am really mis- <laughs> But it, it, it's just like when you're having sex with somebody and you scream somebody else's name. Do you know what that would feel like? Do you know what this is doing to me right now, Chris? I, Sarah, I do understand. Because I have seen that situation on television. Sarah May threatens to kill herself. Don't cut or kill yourself. No, I, I'm doing it right now. Good 
After the chat ended, Christian made a video addressing his concern for Sarah May. Sarah, I feel terrible about what about the big mistake I made in that in our conversation. I hope you don't do anything stupid. I pray you're still alive and well. Because if you you if you committed suicide or hurt yourself because of my actions, I just I feel terrible. I care about you as a friend and you are a sweet friend you are a sweetest among my sweetest friends that I have made in my lifetime I I just cry I lost you <laughs> hopefully I'll get to talk to you again soon I love you, sir, May. I love you as my friend. Immediately after, he made another video, talking about the choice language he had used concerning homosexual men, possibly as a response to allegations of hypocrisy emanating from participants of the recent mumble chat. Captain's Log, star date, February... Oh, shoot. February 18th, 2009. <laughs> Forgive my sniffles, I just did video dedication. I just wanted to make a statement. A retract using the ever using the word hate um, among the uh, gay populace. I I I was under a lot of stress and I'll admit I made a bad word choice when I used when I picked, when I chose that word. I am capable of associating and being friends and respecting all gays. I'm doing this on my heart. Believe me. But hey, but you know, beyond respect and uh, friendship, no. But I do not hate the gay population. The following day, Chris and Julie met again over PSN where they discuss the voices Chris hears in his head. I also uh, give random audio and word thoughts in my, between my audio and my philographic memory, where uh, it's like, you know, other people saying, Christian is gay. What did I say? Christian is gay. Do you really think you're gay? No, I do not. I'm straight. When questioned about the dubious sex toys in his possession, Chris responds truthfully. I put a condom on the uh, dildo and I actually did put up my uh, a-hole. Uh, in my humble opinion, uh, it just did not feel right to me. Wait, did you tell me about the beats? Yeah, I put them up my uh, a-hole uh, the one time and I uh, uh, didn't really know how they worked, so, uh, uh, you know, I just, like, you know, was, like, winging it and uh, it didn't really uh, turn me on or anything, so... I pulled them out, and the, and the string and the beats were covered in poo, so I just put them in the trash can and forget about them. Chris? Yeah. Thank you for telling me this. I'm happy that okay. you're able to share these secrets with me. I mean that as in I'm happy that we have a trusting relationship between you and I. You see me smile? Because I'm smiling. I can see you smile. I truly love you, Chris. I love you too, Julie. After a lengthy chat concerning Chris's sexual activities, he disclosed his PSN account password to Julie. Later again, Bob joined the chat, inquiring about her home country. Here's my dad. Hello. Hello. That's, that's uh, Julie Novania. She came all the way from Mulvania. Mulvania. We were just looking at it on map. Next to... Uh, former part, probably former part of the former Soviet Union. USSR. It's a gypsy country. Ah. You have any gypsy violins there? Yeah, I see. 
Because the thing is, I, I quit a while ago, Chris, because it just, I don't know why. People doubt Mulvania so much. It's, you know. Well, it's, the, all the countries keep changing. And I keep telling Chris, I've been around for 81 years, and I've seen this world change a lot. And it's hard to keep track of which countries or what countries anymore of what they were earlier. Very few people, particularly in this country, really understand the makeup of the world. I have been very interested in the world since I was 10 years old. I'm very fond of, and I really truly believe in, the United Nations. But you won't find anybody else in my countryside around here, I think, that does. But anyway, I'm, I'm very world conscious. Yes. And I've tried to train Christians. But it's awful hard for him to understand because he, he knows about Charlottesville and he knows about our little county here in Green and he knows about places that are 50, 100 miles away. But he doesn't really comprehend, I think, countries or cities or uh, anything that's, that's really farther away. Like, I don't think he really comprehends Europe or, or Asia or anywhere like that. And... Uh, and I find it hard to have most people think about that or comprehend that. Because I'm kind of, I'm kind of a loner. It, it was an interesting, interesting life I had. But I'm still, I'm still much more world conscious than, uh, than I think most of the people in, in this country anyway. At least I, I think so. Yeah. You won't find many people like me around. I'm, 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 I'm uh, since I've retired, which has been now for 20 years, I guess, I really haven't had much contact with people, so I don't get to talk about all this much. Yeah. I've, I've tried to teach Christian, and then whether he's uh, got any comprehension of the world or not, uh, I don't know. He had a tough time with Australia a few months back. I finally, finally got it through his head where Australia was. But I, I, I love the, all the foreign countries and all the foreign music, because I love music. And I've got maybe 15 to 20,000 uh, long play records of uh, classical music and uh, some classical music and jazz and blues. The recording abruptly ends. On February 20th, a video called For Julie's Eyes Only, which featured Christian having sex with a sex doll Kimmy, was uploaded onto the porn aggregate Slutload, allegedly by Julie's brother, Max. Aside from his white socks, Chris is naked throughout. He uses the sex doll to simulate intercourse with Julie, calling out her name many times. After the video was recorded, he confessed to Julie that his condom broke during the recording and he had to replace it. The video eventually amassed over 3 million views. The following day, Aunt Karina passed away. Christian informed Julie about this over Skype and revealed that her funeral would take place on his birthday, which unfortunately clashed with a pancake dinner he was hoping to go to with his church congregation. He also began planning a trip to Julie's residence in Ohio. She convinced him to make a video professing his love for her. Chris delivered his 10 minute long offering with a pseudo Shakespearean panache. I love you Julie so very much. You are, you strike my thought at every moment and it makes me, it makes me ponder with such love and desire. I love you so much. And uh, we yet have a similar storyline to uh, Romeo and Juliet. Only one syllable missing. Missing. It'd be like if we had that syllable, it'd be like Christiano and Juliet. But every night you can, cry, every night you may cry, Christiano, Christiano, where far out thou, Christiano? And I would be there in in your heart. For I, for my heart is with you. For if I call you out, for I would be there in your heart, and I would personally be calling out. I am here, O oh fair Juliet. Tis no, tis no word thy name be heard every moment, every waking moment. And Ju the sun is in the east, and Juliet is the sun. Though I know not much Shakespeare but at least I know enough to get it by. And let's not forget my uh, past, my uh, past, 
Mm. I will only mention her once, but Panda, I know that you are somewhere up there after the fire, and we will not forget you. I promise you, Julie, that in the near future, hopefully with the power of God at our side, we'll be together very soon. For the power of God can influence even the uh, most paranoid of souls, I'm sure. So I pray to him every night that you and I would be together with full emotional support from everyone within our reach, within our respective reach. I'm hugging you, Julie. Mm. Talk to you later. On the same day, the Sonichu girl's form was revealed to be a ruse, the creation of which attributed to Clyde Cash. Chris confronted Clyde in a mumble chat. To Christian's surprise, the troll was accompanied by a veritable squadron of trolls who called themselves the Miscreants. Welcome to the Brothers. Miscreants. Brother. Brother. First, stop this. Look, first off, I did that video just for Julie. And her brother found it on her computer and uploaded to the YouTube without neither of our consent. Do you understand what the miscreants are? And her brother is part of it. He has been a very valuable member. Do you understand what the miscreants are, Chris? Let I me mean, guess, you're all a bunch of trolls, aren't you? No. Yeah. No. Look, ever since Evan posted those gay pictures with the masturbated and squirting, we have been there from the beginning. Do you remember Jason? Always a valuable member, always threatening to take the fall for me. Creating the ED page, getting your emails. He was a good member too. And can't you remember Blanca, the one who destroyed your medallion? Remember? Yeah. All part of the miscreants, Chris. And the latest member. Stella McKenzie, or you know us, Panda. She's not dead. She's alive at my side. Kind of sleeping right now. I shouldn't be talking so loud. But anyway, I can't believe you fell for her. We've been here from the beginning. Do you know why, Chris? To try and make a slander out of me and a uh, fool? No, the goal is to make sure you never get laid. That is the goal of the mystery. <laughs> Virginia is my virgin. Our goal is that you are a virgin forever. I left you. Why do you all have to pick on me like this? You don't care about women. That I do care well. about women. You must be made an example of, of a horrible man, destined to never, to ever have a wife or even girlfriend. Shut up! Why do you have to pick on me like this? You don't need to do this. Don't you all have lives of your own? Can't you go find your own sweethearts to do with? Why do you think a sweetheart will solve everything? Look, I care, I care about the women for their own personalities. I can't no, you don't. All my life. No, you don't. Bully. You don't receive it. I care about their personalities, you bastards. What? I, I, I care about their personalities. I care about them, about how they feel. I care about everything about them. Chris, inside. you don't respect them. You only respect their cunts. Uh, what? what? You gotta respect the ladies, man. I do respect the ladies. No, you don't. <laughs> You're a fucking spaz bucket, you stupid fag. What the fuck are you doing here right now, Chris? What the <laughs> hell? Origin, settle down. Uh, Hang yourself, Chris. Kill yourself. Hey, 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 spare us. No, we don't want him to die. Hey. No, 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 no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Settle down. I got my Aunt Arena's death to worry about in her funeral tomorrow. You don't care. Oh, and I don't care. So much you don't care. 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 You what did I don't say, worry, Pat? Chris will come back when he realizes Julie's hey. in danger. Yes, what we should do is have, like,
quote, Julie, unquote, be like, oh no, my brother's like with the miscreants, and no, they're holding me hostage. Like my After a short while, Chris indeed comes back. Look, I'm sorry about a lot of my past mistakes about uh, not listening to everyone, okay? But I have been under a lot of stress. What is this stress? You the always stress. fight stress over the stress and over. The, I have a lot of stress in my life. My Aunt Corina just died, and I have to, and I have to go to her funeral, and I'm going to be very sad that day. And it's happening, you know, it's happening on my birthday of all days. She was more sad about her than your birthday. I am very upset about my Aunt Karina. She was a very sweet woman. But you seem to complain about it being on your birthday. I feel sympathy for my Aunt Karina. She she smoked and she had a, and when she went to the hospital, she died at the age of seventy five. She her her blood her, her, her cancer deteriorated her left lung and her liver and her brain. And they kept her alive for as long as they could until she until she prayed, until she breathed the last breath. <laughs> Let him cry, but he still still does not excuse you for all your other past actions. Ah, but I'm I'm possibly retarded. Okay, my mind doesn't think so swift yet. But I'm, I'm likely to even make mistakes on a fly without even realizing it. I sometimes don't even give thought to some of the absurd actions that I do before. I do, but I gave a lot of thought before when I moved from moved from uh, Panda the Julie. Because I thought she, because I thought she had died that fire. As the miscreants continued to insult Chris, he was simultaneously chatting with Julie's brother Max, who took over her Skype account. Max told Christian that he had kidnapped her and was taking her to the miscreants HQ in Ohio, giving Chris five days to come rescue her. Look, Chris, this this is the sad, sad truth. You are going to grow up and die now. I'm sorry to tell you this. Look, leave me. Look, just, just shut up. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. We're trying to help. Leave my, leave my love life alone. Oh. <laughs> you have to cry. Okay, we believe really fine. Cry. I just think we went too far. That was a little. I but apologize for that, and I apologize for nothing. I regret even less. I, I can't even say funny. I feel sympathy for the lower beings. I feel yeah. sympathy towards the parents. Well, I feel sympathy towards Bob. Yeah. 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 yeah, was he really crying? Cause I like, I like... Christian returns once again to inform the miscreants that Julie was taken to their headquarters. Uh, and that's Julie's brother. Pretty much uh, spirited away, Julie took her to the HQ, to the headquarters, where the uh, miscreants, I think they were called, are. And... Uh, now uh, Max wants me to come over to Cleveland within the next five days to pick up Julie from the headquarters. And I'm just trying to find out uh, if Clyde is planning if he's uh, going to try to force me in jail or uh, hurt me or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's very unfortunate. Mm -hmm. uh, listen, that's another thing that, you know, my mom... You know, my mom is like, you know, she's got to be telling me, don't go, don't go, I worry about it. You know, she's watched a lot of television. It's like I'm trying, and I've been trying to convince her to let me go to Julie. But then my mom is also a bit jealous of me loving of loving another woman more than her. I mean, I know, I mean, I understand she's in a situation like cut the umbilical cord, you would say, I'm sure. But still, I have to respect my mother very much. Hello, Clyde. Uh-oh. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mr. Sonic Hue. Happy birthday to you. Oh, dear. Uh, I've been drinking. Well, anyway, uh, he just basically want me to test my love for Julie. And uh, oh. he just want me to finally show that I am a man and uh, I can uh, stand up for myself and do what I want like a man should. And that's uh, basically it in a nutshell, isn't it? Sure, that's perfect. Okay, well, I'll talk to my mom bud later and put my foot down. Because right now she's sleeping and then I have the funeral to worry about. So after the funeral, I will talk to my mom and put my foot down. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, majority of y'all take care and, um, you know, just mingle amongst yourselves for now. Take care. <laughs>
After he left the chat, Christian began preparing for Aunt Karina's funeral and his eventual trip into uncertainty awaiting him in Cleveland, Ohio. Without a doubt, this would prove to be the most trying birthday of his life. <laughs>